Today we're working on volume of rectangular prisms. So let's start with this. If you notice, we have a picture here of a base 10 flat uh, with the dimension shown. You can see it's five centimeters at its base, five centimeters at its width, and it's one centimeter tall. So the question here is how could you find the amount of space taken up by a stack of four of these? How could we figure out the space? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that today. So volume is the amount of three-dimensional space occupied by an object. Volume can also be referred to as capacity. So how much can you fill inside of this box here? So let's talk about what the base is. This is gonna be a new term. Now in the past, we've used base lowercase b to mean the distance of the bottom here, right? We call this the base. We usually call that uh, the height or the length or the width. Um, but today we're talking about base with a capital B. So the base of a three-dimensional object names the shape. And what I mean by this is when we use our volume formula, you're going to see me use the term base to actually mean the area of whatever object is on the bottom. Um, so a prism has two bases which are parallel to each other and they do not touch. Right, and we learned about this with triangular prisms and rectangular prisms both. So it's the two bases that do not touch but run parallel. And then last, the area of the base is represented by a capital B. So it's going to be a little, little change in what we've done before, but hopefully this makes sense to you. The capital B is different than the lowercase b. Lowercase b usually refers to a length or width. Capital B refers to the base area of whatever the bottom object is. So when you turn that object on its, on its uh, on however you're standing it up, right? The bottom and top of it should be parallel to each other. And that is the base area we're looking for. So let's take a look at this and we'll kind of break it down. So what's the shape of the base on this? In other words, what, what shape is this object sitting on? Hopefully you say a rectangle, right? Shape of the base is a rectangle. So our capital B base is going to be 9 times 4.5. In other words, we have a length and a width. So length times width would be the capital B for base. Let's look at number two. What is the shape of the base? It's also a rectangle. Oops, I put the answer there too. It's also a rectangle. So what are the dimensions of the base of that rectangle? Well, notice 25 is the height, so that can't be the base because it doesn't relate to the bottom object. But on top here, we have 7 by 16. So those are our base area, 7 times 16. And when we multiply those, what do you get? I'm going to let you fill that in. Let's look at number three. What is the base of this object? Uh, this one's a square, not a rectangle. Hopefully you figured that out by the identical measurements. So if the bottom is a square, the base area should be pretty easy. Again, I'm going to let you write that down. What two numbers are we multiplying and what would we get as our solution? Let's move on to the next section. So rectangular prisms. So when we talk about volume, volume can be determined by finding the area of the base's capital B again and multiplying it by the height of the prism. We kind of went over this earlier. I remember asking the question in class, how do we find the surface area? And some of you um, had guessed, well, if we do length times width times height, and I said, no, because, right, we would get inches cubed or feet cubed or centimeters cubed. But with, with volume, that's exactly what we're looking for. So in a rectangular prism, the area of the base can be found by using the formula big B, base area equals base times height, or you could say length times width. So the formula can be written as volume equals base area times height. So let's describe each variable. So V stands for the volume of the prism. Now the way our curriculum defines the, the larger case B, or uppercase B is area of the prism, but you're gonna hear me call it base area. It's the area of the base, but I call it base area. So it's all determined by the object on the bottom or the shape on the bottom. And then H, as you know, is the height of the prism. That term is not changing. All right, let's get into some actual examples now. So taking a look at number four, 
What is the base? Well, the base here is shaded and it is a rectangle. Our formula stays the same as what we just said, vo volume equals base area times height. But we need to find, so the difference with this formula is we need to find the base area first before we plug in all the values. So let's go ahead and find the base area. What are the two numbers that make up the bottom of this object? 15 and 10, right? So up here, I'm gonna write base area equals 10 times 15. And let's go ahead and, and simplify that. 10 times 15 gives you 150. So our base area is 150. So now let's plug in the values. Notice I've gotten rid of these two numbers now. So the base area here is 150. And I'm going to multiply that by the height, which is here 12. So we have 150 times 12. All we have to do is multiply those to get our volume. Now remember when we multiply three numbers that all have feet connected to them, we should get feet cubed, feet to the third power. So we get 1,800 feet cubed as our solution. In other words, you could break this down 15 times 10 times 12. Okay, let's get on to the next one. Same formula, volume equals base area times height. Okay, what is our base area? What is the object or what is the shape that is underneath and on top of this object? Hopefully you say a square because we see 21 by 21. There's a height of 6.1, but let's look for the base area first. So we have 21 times 21. If I simplify that, I should get 441. Now notice I put millimeters squared because I want you to understand that we're already, we have the area here. When we multiply it by the height, that's how we get the cubed answer. So plug in the values. We have 441 times, we said the height was 6.1. And what do you get as your solution? 2,690.1 millimeters cubed. All right, last one on this page. What is the shape that's formed at the bottom there? Oh, same formula. The shape that's formed at the bottom there is a rectangle again. So let's go ahead and find the base area first. What are our two numbers? We have base of four, height of two, Let's do four times two, simplify that to get eight inches squared. And then let's plug that number and our height into the formula. So volume equals eight times 9.25. Now remember, I just changed the one fourth into a decimal. And let's go ahead and answer that. Eight times 9.25 gives us 74 inches squared. All right, let's move on. Number seven, now we're given a different number. We're given the total volume, 408 cubic inches. What is the height of the prism? So we have to kind of work backwards on this. First off, I think it would be worth us finding the base area. We know that it is, it is a rectangle as the base. So let's go ahead and find the base area first. So 3.4 times eight is going to give us 27.2 inches squared. Now, why did I find that first? Because remember, if we're given the volume of 408 cubic inches, that means I know what the volume is, so I can plug that into my formula. I don't know the height, which is what I'm looking for, but I can find the base area by simply multiplying the length times the width or the base times the height. So 27.2, I can now plug that back into my formula. Remember we were given 408 cubic inches as our volume. We just found 27.2 as our base area and we're looking for the height. What do we have? We have a one step equation. So what do we do to solve this? We simply divide by 27.2 to get H by itself. And so our height, is 15 inches. And if you don't believe me, you can always multiply these two together and then multiply by 15 to make sure you get 408. All right, number eight. Again, we're given the volume. This time we're given the base. We're not given the height. Um, so we don't have the full base area, but we do have the height of the object. So Let's go ahead and plug in some numbers here. Now, what I did is I, I kind of expanded it a little bit. 
So remember, base area is base times height. So what I did is I just plugged it all into the same side of the equation. So I put 24 times x times 1, right? Because base area is really, really the same thing. Base times height times height of the object. So let's go ahead and simplify this. Now, thankfully, because we're multiplying by 1, this makes it really easy. 24 times 1 gives me 24. So we have 2,736 equals 24 times x. And now I just need to solve the same way I did with number 7. Get x by itself by dividing by 24. So what is our width? 9.5 inches. All right, last one. Chelsea's building a sandbox for her backyard that will be 8 feet wide, 6 feet long, and 3 and a quarter feet tall. To fill the sandbox, each bag of sand contains 0.5 cubic feet and costs $3.90. How much will it cost for Chelsea to fill her sandbox with sand? What do we know? Well, we know that the width is 8 feet. We know that the length is 6 feet. And we know that the height is, I'm going to change this to a decimal, point. 75 feet. And what we need to know is how many cubic feet we need, right? Let's see, we're just going to put, we need to know cubic feet. Okay, so let's plan our work. First off, what we're going to do is we're going to use our formula volume equals base area times height. Let's go ahead and plug in our values. We don't know the volume, but we do know the base area. So remember length times width or base times height, which would give us 48 feet squared. So that means for the base area, we're gonna plug in 48. And for our height, we're gonna plug in 0 0.75. All right, let's go ahead and simplify that. 48 times 0.75. That's going to give us a volume of 36 cubic feet. We're going to write that as feet cubed. And we want to know if each bag of sand contains 0.5 cubic feet, how much will it cost for Chelsea to fill her sandbox? Well, we know that it's going to be a total of 36 cubic feet to, to fill the sandbox. So how do we figure out how many bags of sand we're going to need? If every bag weighs half a cubic foot, what am I doing to find my solution? So hopefully what you said was we're not dividing this, right? We're multiplying this. Let's go ahead and multiply. Nope, I did say that wrong, didn't I? We are dividing this. So 36 divided by, let's divide All right, so what we're going to get is we need 72 bags total. Now, the reason I figured out it was division and not multiplication, sometimes I forget to, but if you multiply 36 by 0.5, you end up getting half of that number, which is 18. Right, when we multiply by a fraction, it decreases the number. And that didn't make sense to me. Why would we only have 18 bags of sand when each bag only contains half a cubic foot. So by dividing by 0.5 or by one half, we increase the amount of bags and we're essentially doubling the amount of bags that we need from the amount of cubic feet that we have. So 72 bags is what it's going to take us. Now, if every bag costs $3.90, we're gonna take 72 and we're gonna multiply it, right? Because every bag costs $3.90. So let's go ahead and multiply those together. And the total cost is going to be, this is quite expensive, $280.80. I wanna make sure I got the number right. $280.80. That's a lot of work for that problem. I hope that made sense. If you guys have questions, feel free to reach out and ask. All right, that does it for this video. See you next time.